Welcome to the Steve Reeve Podcast with the best moments from the past week and a few things that didn't make it there. Powered by Coldwell Banker Ford McMurray. We love YMM. Monday. We got to give a huge congratulations out there to uh, a couple in town who have been all over the HGTV airwaves for the last month and a half talking about Battle on the Beach Season 2, uh, the Canadian team, which as they introduced all five of the teams in Episode 1, uh, very funny that they had to, you know, burr, 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 burr. they're from up north in Canada, so they're used to how chilly the beaches of Texas can be in the wintertime. Uh, it, yeah, while they filmed it, it was pretty chilly, apparently, uh, which you wouldn't expect for battle on the beach but it is a competition show and the finale watch party happened in town last night at boston pizza and here's just a little bit of what that sounded like when the big news at the very end of the final episode of season two was revealed I'm sorry, spoiler alert, yeah, they won. But if you want to see why they won and why they were so successful winning a lot of the challenges throughout the six episodes of the season, uh, it is available through HGTV. And I think on demand, easiest way to find it for us is Stack TV add-on to whatever you got. <laughs> There's so many different streaming services. So just do a little hunting. It is available if you're curious to watch. And big congratulations to Paige and Corey Sear for winning the season. This is hilarious to me. The hat came back the very same day. There's a story going around about Linda and her husband, Richard. Uh, she has banned a certain hat of his. He's not allowed to wear it. She hates it. But they went on vacation. Guess what Richard did? He brought the hat with him. He wore it for sure. And as they were on a boat, the wind caught it and it went off to sea. Lost forever, right? Except for that some random bystander had found it washed up on shore, had put it up on a pole so it was more visible, and Richard was taking a walk when on land again and found it the same day, just like hours after the fact. Linda must have been extremely upset to think that finally the hat that she hated was gone forever. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, just missing for a little while. Who is this guy anyway? Indiana Jones and or Captain Jack Sparrow, right? Do you have a piece of clothing or a collectible maybe that your partner or your family just hates? Carlos Santana is on top of those with, of course, a recent collapse on stage while performing. And now, as expected, several dates have been postponed. Uh, he did postpone one on July 8th and the next four on his North American tour have also been uh, postponed and due to a an abundance of caution for his health. No updates on this condition or what happened to him exactly, but it does seem that they are taking it very seriously and he's getting the rest that he needs. Hey, take more time off if you need it, man. Uh, D. Snyder in the news as well because he says he's probably retiring. He's not going to be making any more music. He was answering some questions on Twitter over the weekend, and to one question he answered, All I can do, uh, oh, I can only do what's right for me, and for my retirement, I'm writing screenplays, directing a movie, releasing my first fiction novel, producing two animated series, etc., etc., etc. My wife laughs when I tell her I'm retiring. He just says he just doesn't have it in him to make new music while he's working on all the other things he can cares about. Good thing there's all the old stuff. And Fallout Boy have made it into the news because of a huge $100,000 donation in the name of gun safety, specifically to a nonprofit that advocates for control of guns and protests against gun violence in the wake of the mass shooting that occurred in Highland Park, Illinois, as well as across uh, the USA over the July 4th weekend. Uh, they have donated it to every town. That is $100,000 equaling 83,000 pounds. Tuesday. Lightning crash is just like in that classic scene from the very first Jurassic Park from the early 90s where the T-Rex finally makes it out of the T-Rex paddock. Uh, now, <laughs> there's a figurine that's based on that scene that's coming out that I never would have guessed would have been happening. Not exactly the setting that I think Live was going for in their lyrics to that song we just heard, but yeah, I'm talking about the lawyer who is with the kids and then gets spooked and jumps out of the tour car that's on the, the electric track and runs into the bathroom and then gets eaten on the toilet. Yes, there is a figure, a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive figure for 2022 that is going to be available later this month depicting said lawyer 
said T-Rex, as well as said toilet. Because you know what they say. Where does he think he's going? When you gotta go, you gotta go. Diving into your music news headlines, they had their second of a series of reunion shows. First time on stage in years, and there was an injury. Zach De La Roca injured his leg somehow. He wasn't even sure how, saying, I don't know what happened to my leg straight up, but you know what? We're going to keep this bleeping bleep going. I can crawl across this stage. We're going to play all night for you tonight. And uh, they went right into Testify and several other hits. Uh, fantastic. And a lot of people reacting all over social media saying that there was a fantastic show. And despite a little bit less movement on the stage from the front man, one person in particular saying Zach De La Roca just gave a better performance while sitting than most artists give on their two feet. And as well, there's the Amy Winehouse biopic, Back to Black, that has been talked about since 2018. And finally, it looks like it's got the go-ahead. Uh, Sam Taylor Johnson is the director of it now, and ha it has full approval and support from the late singer's estate. Looks like we're going to see that in the next few years. And there was a touching tribute to Taylor Hawkins from his son, as captured on a TikTok video at the account Lagtown's Finest, where he played drums to my hero and dedicated it to his dear old dad, who we lost. All of us, but especially him, earlier this year. Pretty good. You're listening to the Steve Reed Podcast, Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. Oh, I'm excited. I'm so excited. I love food. I love food so much. And there's always such good food when it comes to the YMM Food Festival. Uh, now, I'm here talking to Jason Beck with Waypoints, uh, the beneficiaries of the proceeds of this festival, and also the people who put it on, along with the whole village of help, right? So 100%. how are you doing today? Doing great. Thank you. We kicked off our food festival already, so we're yeah. like a part way in right now. So yeah, it's going really well. And the comedy show, uh, just at the end of last week, and at the end of this week is my favorite part of the, the food festival, the uh, hashtag we of OIMM Patio Party. It's back again. It's back. We yes. are so excited to have this back. This is the, it's my personal favorite one of all that we do and uh, it's just such a great vibe, such great energy and of course this year we've increased it a little bit in the sense of that we have far more entertainment this year. Of course we have DJ Cupid who's always there. We have a couple of extra DJs that are going to be there. We also have a stage going to be on the barge with some live bands and so uh, cool. and we're actually going to have Latin salsa dancing yeah. lessons as well. So like you don't need to know how. You nope. can just find, learn if you, how. If you if you wanted to learn how to get your groove on in salsa dancing, yeah. we got you covered. That's the, the number one thing that I've heard about when you know the uh, news came out, and and as we've been getting closer to the date, this Friday is the date at the Heritage Shipyard. Uh, is is it's back, and mm -hmm. that's, I've heard that so many times. It's back. Oh, that's so exciting! I gotta get tickets, kind of thing. Get your tickets now because this is a thing that sells out pretty much every year that it's been on, and a really cool uh, experience because you're kind of transported in the Heritage Shipyard area under the canopy with the with the train and the, and yep. the barges and everything, and summer nights whether it's raining a little bit or not like everybody still just loves to stay there and party and it's for a good cause <laughs> it is it is I remember when we went for the site visit to see if this would be our location for the patio party the folks at Her Heritage Society are always so gracious and good for us yeah. Uh, and yeah it's just a great venue the vibe there is incredible it kind of feels like you're in Granville Island an incredible incredible night so yeah you'll want to get there for yeah. sure if you haven't been uh, to this event or even the shipyard this is the time absolutely this take is. advantage you can get your tickets and find out in the, in the information about the entire festival at fortmcmurrayfoodfestival.ca be remiss to not talk about why this is going on. So what does Waypoints do in our community? How does this help? So, of course, we run uh, two emergency shelters. Number one emergency shelter here in, in town for women or women with children who are experiencing uh, domestic violence. We have a second stage shelter as well. We have a sexual assault healing center. We have a child youth advocacy center. We have an offenders program called Opportunities for Change. We have an outreach team that goes to all of our region uh, with programs and services. And so, yeah, waypointswb.ca is the website because I cannot touch yeah, this quickly yeah. on everything that we do. We could be here all <laughs> All day. Exactly. Um, and you guys have been here for a long, long time, for decades and decades. A legacy 40 organization. 40 years. Exactly. This year, yep. 40 years. So help celebrate the big 40 by coming out to the, the patio party this Friday. Or other events are coming up as well, too. So I know uh, today, Food Trivia is on. At Patty McSwiggins, yeah. Tomorrow night is Original Joe's for Music Bingo. They're going to have some great specials on as well for that. And then, of course, Saturday is the Anzac Beach Party. So you'll want to check that out for sure as well. Oh. And YMM Eats, uh, Taste of YMM yes. Eats is running as well. 
until August the 15th. So it's participating restaurants where you can go have an amazing food and a portion of your, uh, of your uh, cost, a portion of your, of what you pay comes to us at Waypoints as yeah. well. So we're pretty excited. Nine restaurants so far this year. It's our biggest yet. And for people who love to give their opinion on, on, on what they're, what they're you doing, what vote. they're experiencing, you get to vote too. You get, you to, get vote. to choose what the best was. Yeah. And so lots of time still to take part in that. All the details at Fort McMurray Food Festival. I double checked as well. Double checked the weather here. Friday, it may be a little cloudy, but it's going to be hot. And then Saturday for the Anzac Beach Party, perfect weather. Love it. Just say it. Love it. The weather's Keeping on the your side. Keeping the good vibes to Mother Nature. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it locked in there. And if a little rain happens, stick around. The party's still going to be happening. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today, Jason. Thanks for having me. Once again, Fort McMurray Food Festival.ca. If you want to come to the patio party this Friday, you got to get your tickets right now. Wednesday. Twitter is ready to take Elon Musk to court, apparently, over his backing out of the Twitter purchase, you know, the whole $44 billion deal, and it's been just a whole entire circus. And back when this circus started, Musk was so confident in his whimsy uh, that he said he would pay the social media giant $1 billion if he backed out. He then almost immediately started building a legal defense and inventing demands that must be met before putting any money on the table. You know, some common sense stuff, but some seems a little bit extra specific. What do I know? But, you know, it seems to me that he's trying to get out of paying what he said he would, while also getting to back out of the deal. Back and forth between the company and the guy and blah, blah, blah. Elon finally officially says, that's it, done, don't want it anymore. So in comes the fresh lawsuit. Well, you know... In the words of Lloyd Christmas, in a little place called Aspen, and you can repeat this same sentiment for anything to do with the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. I don't care. Mr. Tom Cruise. Uh, now, Miles Teller, his co-star, uh, it says that Tom is thinking about Top Gun 3. I have two reasons why I say no thank you. And that is with love for the original movie and a lot of love for the new one, too. In fact, I actually enjoy this year's Top Gun Maverick even more. But the story has been told now. You know, at least for Tom Cruise's character, for sure. Miles, tell him we don't need it. Uh, but why couldn't they just continue on with Rooster's story? I hear you asking. Well, that's my second reason. Loose spoilers for Top Gun Maverick here, but you know at the very start of the movie, when Maverick pushes the test flight to the limit, my headcanon is that he actually died in that test flight, and that the rest of the movie is this ethereal dying wish fulfillment. Seriously, watch it again with that in mind, and it completely changes and lifts the movie up. It blew my mind to think of it in that way. And it makes it a true closer, right? But the new one also made a ton of money, so Top Gun 3 is probably just a foregone conclusion at this point. Hopefully, that means we also get a Hot Shots Part 3 from Charlie Sheen. Hey Alexa, play the Steve Reeve podcast. There's a conspiracy at work. At least three men have been charged with a conspiracy to sell some stolen Eagles lyrics. And uh, they were in the possession of a whole bunch of stolen handwritten notes as well as lyrics from co-founder Don Henley. The three men in question are Glenn Horowitz, as well as Rock and Roll Hall of Fame curator Craig Inchiardi in in and Edward Kozinski, uh, all accused of attempting to sell these handwritten notes and lyrics from songs like In the Life in the Fast Lane, uh, Hotel California is in there, for about a, about a million dollars. That is a whole lot of zeros on there. But it was stolen, of course, and... They were found out. New York officials are estimating that the value is worth more than $1 million, and these guys are on the hook. Metallica is in the news again because of the Stranger Things effect. It has reached across the pond where Master of Puppets is now about to enter the UK Top 40 charts for the first time ever, though the 1986 single is obviously from 1986. And yes, it's all thanks to Eddie Munson, portrayed by Joseph Quinn, who is from England, uh, and the roof tro- uh, rooftop track being shredded to help out saving the day versus the Upside Down. Tenacious D's got a new album coming out as well for fans of the joke band and especially fans of their more conceptual work. It is going to be a concept album. Perhaps a pick of destiny number two, though no word of a sequel movie has been mentioned whatsoever. Great movie. Didn't make a ton of money. The irrational fears of childhood. They sure shaped our imagination and our view of the larger world around us and then turned out to be, like, totally false. Most of them. I mean, the big one that everybody clings to is quicksand, right? Quicksand! 
I, it was in everything. It was a trope in every cartoon show, every adult show, every adventure that had any kind of jungle in it whatsoever. There was quicksand, and we were convinced that we were going to run into it, uh, walking around, hiking around the trails of Fort McMurray. Yeah, not really going to happen. Bermuda Triangle as well. Oh my god, it's a terrible place. And uh, things like, if you swallow a seed, that plant is going to grow in your body. If you swallow gum, it stays in you for seven plus years. And blah, 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 blah. Uh, I was asking, what is the thing that you were convinced of as a kid that turns out wasn't so much of an issue? Ashley you got in touch to say, sea monsters. Now it's just, she's just afraid of the sea. Just blanket statement, the ocean. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it goes on to say, really like the, the, the cryptids, the, the cryptozoology, the Ogopogo, the Loch Ness Monster, the lake-based ones. Those are the ones that were really scary as a kid. Uh, Dan says, flying monkeys. I'm, I'm guessing that's got to be some Wizard of Oz stuff going on. I can understand. I really can. Patrick, interestingly enough, says, falling from a high place. I never go up to high places. Now, that is a, a fear that is not so irrational. That is a fear that is very real. You shouldn't fall from a very high place, whether a kid or otherwise, Patrick. I gotta say, I, I agree. And then we've also got uh, Brad saying, dead people, dead people. Don't be so afraid of them because it's the people who are living who will be the ones who hurt you. I hope nobody hurt you recently, Brad. And if so, I'm sending you a, a radio hug, virtual over the airwaves hug. It's coming your way. I feel like you might need it. Thursday. Feeling smug. Got first place at a Brooklyn Nine-Nine trivia event last night. Uh, trivia con competition. First place. Uh, not bad. Not bad. A victory that I take with the same dramatic flair and exuberance of a Halloween heist winner right from the show. Uh, although, you know, I don't have sparklers or, or, or anything pyrotechnic to spell out my name. Probably a good idea. I'd probably mess it up anyway. But didn't mess up last night. Uh, did very well. Uh, and I'm wondering, you know, what is the show for you? What is the thing for you? The franchise, the, the experience that you just, it's part of your, your DNA at this point and you would absolutely rock it. What I, I want to know. Cause I'm feeling like that's great. It's a victory. But at the same time, it's like, oh. Oh, I've put a lot. I've put a lot of time into this show, apparently. A lot of attention that could have been towards something that was a little bit more important or bettering of my own life. Nah. Nah. Just watching tons of sitcom hour after hour. You know what I mean? But at least, at the very least, I'm able to feel like the hours that I have sunk into this show have now been 100% worth it. Vindication! Just about jumped out of my skin. Because apparently they're cleaning the windows outside of the studio today, and we're on the second level. And I just saw uh, a gentleman's head pop up into view, and I'm going, what is going on? Uh, but I wanted to talk about terrible subscription services. And now I'm not talking about the ones that you're just like, oh, this doesn't, it's not worth it. I tried it, and I didn't like it. You know, that's a bit of a different thing. I don't really have a hate on for, like, subscription boxes, you know, monthly consumer boxes and things. Maybe a little bit of over-packaging going on, a little bit of over-consuming, but still... I mean, at least you're getting something for it, right? Something you did not have before. That's the key. BMW is getting a lot of flack on the internet because of an announcement about future subscription service-based car seat heaters. So the seat heater's already there. You just have to pay money to be able to activate it. And that's the fundamental problem here. That's the issue that I have. Asking, what are the worst possible subscription services you can think of like that? Like anything over a two-toilet flush per day uh, minimum. You gotta have a subscription service for it. Uh-uh. That thing's getting plugged until the next morning, that's for sure. Uh, anything that would be like access to something you already have. Access to the drinks in your own fridge. The compartment unlocks as long as you've got your subscription up to date. I would hate that so much. Just taunting you. Taunting you. Um, what about... Most horrifying thing I can think of. One of those vasectomy switch devices. Remember these in the news not too, too long ago? Where you can get the device implanted and then you can switch. You can toggle between on and off. But you can't pay your subscription service? Oh, you can't turn it on anymore. Now that's terrifying. Body autonomy for everyone, I think, is the best scenario. 
Thanks for listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. Guns N' Roses, well, kind of indirectly Guns N' Roses. Really, it's Rockin' 1000, which we've uh, featured some clips from before here on Music News. And they are a group uh, in the world of thousand, literally thousand musicians who cover songs in a huge way. So it takes a lot of logistics to actually gather that many people together. Think of how hard it is to get 10 of your friends in the same place. They get a thousand musicians together to do different tracks. And this time around... Uh, covering Guns N' Roses' Paradise City, basically just because they lo- fell in love with it after seeing it on the Thor Love and Thunder soundtrack. And here's what a thousand musicians sounds like playing a little GNR. It's pretty rocket in there, and you know, there's huge solos, huge slash solos in that song. Take a look, the video's online for you to take a look at. You can also listen to the new single from Sloan. They just uh, surprise announced that there's a brand new single and a brand new album that's going to be coming out. Spend the Day is going to be released much later, but they have now let us know uh, that uh, October 21st is going to be the date, and that's on the 30-year anniversary year. Maybe not the exact day, but 30 years since their very first album, Smeared, ever came out. So, very, very cool. The new single is out already and uh, can be listened to all over all kinds of streaming services. It is the title track as well, called Spend the Day. The Clooney Batsuit is up for grabs. The nipply bat suit that one yeah that one from 1997's batman and robin from joel schumacher taking over the franchise and sort of continuing on the story from tim burton's two movies yeah uh it was strange times it was strange strange times back in those days uh and the close-ups of the suit the close-ups of him getting dressed up batted out with the nips just pointing Point to the sky, you know. It, you could be, it, it could be yours. You could have it. You could uh, put your bid on it through what is it? Heritage Auctions is selling it, and uh, the bids are happening through July 23rd. The opening bid, forty thousand USD. So I mean, you kind of got to be loaded, and you kind of got to have some sort of justification to tell to the family why the heck you own this thing. And I don't think that just pointing to the nipples and being like, "Look," is quite gonna cut it here. But the bottom line is is that George Clooney's bat suit with the nipples and everything is up for grabs and presumably up for pinches as well. Friday. I just like this a lot. Finland just held its first ever heavy metal knitting championship. Yeah, I uh, heard that right. Apparently, just about everyone there is into both of those things. Metal, heavy metal, and knitting. In fact, it is the so-called promised land of, of heavy metal music. 50 heavy metal bands per 100,000 citizens of Finland. That's quite a lot. Quite a lot, actually, per capita. At least there is a ton of crossover there between the metal and the knitting. It reminds me of a time that I was attending a, a nerd convention, total nerd convention, that was sharing a convention center with a one-day metal festival. So... There was a little bit of oil and water going on at first, but honestly, it didn't take very long. It was very quick before it became clear that we were all just a bunch of awesome weirdos dressing up in costumes. Some, you know, in full color, primary color, superheroes, muscles and everything, and everyone else exclusively in black. The Rolling Stones, who are celebrating 60 years as a band. As of this week, it was July 12th in 1962 in London at the Marquee Jazz Club, where they first performed as the Rolling Stones ever. But for the 60th anniversary, of course, they have been making some live music happen. They're also uh, in a new documentary, four-part documentary, that's going to be starting off uh, in the near future. August is when it actually begins, and it, it, within My Life as a Rolling Stone, the docuseries features uh, the Rolling Stones on well, being the Rolling Stones, uh, with quotes like, Mick Jagger is Mick Jagger, a very honorable man under all that crap, from Keith Richards. And right back in reverse, Jagger saying, Keith's got a reputation as a hellraiser. He'd play the Beatles all the time. It'd drive me batty. Uh, August 7th is the very first date that we're going to see one of those episodes. However, not exactly sure how to access it because it's going to be coming up on the Epics streaming service. And is that available in Canada? Is that available as an add-on to another streaming service? You know what? I just don't know.
We'll have to dig around for it, but I'm sure it will become readily available in due time. Meanwhile, Oasis back in the news again, not because of dysfunction, but because of reissue. 25th anniversary reissue of Be Here Now, in fact, is going to be on a double heavyweight LP in silver color. And again, also going to be released in August uh, 19th of specifically. And uh, also not just on the vinyls, but on disc cassette is coming out. Remastered audio on every single one of the tracks and, of course, available to stream on whatever service you use. They're finally here. The sexy photos of not the actual firefighters. Full disclosure. I'm going to just pull that, rip the Band-Aid right off right there, because, yeah, uh, we will get to see the firefighters, the men and women of the Fort McMurray Firefighters Charities Association annual calendar of 2023 when the calendar is released, and that's going to be later on in the fall. More details to come. But for now, what you can do is get interactive with it, intimate and interactive, uh, by voting between two photos of myself that could go into that calendar. Which one do you think should be in there? A lot of love for the one with the kitten, rescuing a kitten out of a tree, but then I'm also... Uh, can I even say that? Playing with my fire hose in the other photo? <laughs> it's kind of suggestive. Uh, so you can vote at cruiseradio.com right now and until the 28th of July to have your say as to which one should get put into that calendar. we got to act fast because it's got to get printed soon, right? Then in the, the fall... We're going to let you know more details. For now, get your vote on. And thank you so much for all the love that's come in so far. And for some of the jokes as well. A uh, huge shout out as well to the Fort McMurray Firefighters Charities Association for helping me out, support through the journey to lose some weight and get in shape for this. A uh, huge shout out to Cut and Conquer Fitness for pro- providing that meal, uh, you know, nutrition and fitness plan. And to Emily Gale Photography for taking the photos. Woo! Takes a village, man. Can't wait for the actual calendar. Transmission over. Want more Steve? New podcast episodes happen every Friday or just tune into the Steve Reeve Show. Weekday mornings starting at 5.30 a.m. on 100.5 Cruise FM.